Alright guys, so in this video I will be mapping out the 10 hallucinatory states of the psychedelic experience. So we don't know a whole lot when it comes to consciousness and this subjective mind map of the psychedelic experience, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt. However, these hallucinatory states which I'm about to share with you guys are very common that people report all around the world, so there are a lot of consistencies. So to me this is very interesting and implies that there are parts of the human psyche that we all share that maybe could be a part of the collective unconscious or maybe it could be other layers of reality that we just happen to perceive when we take these psychedelic substances. So in this video I will be attempting to subjectively mind map the hallucinatory states that may approach you during the psychedelic experience. Which doesn't just apply to entheogenic trips, this also applies to other non-ordinary states of consciousness such as lucid dreaming, sleep deprivation, sleep paralysis, deep meditation, fasting, floating, etc, etc. External hallucinations are perception alterations that are experienced real time in your external environment. This is probably the most popular hallucinatory state of the psychedelic experience. There are many types of visual effects that you can experience during a psychedelic trip, which I'm not going to list here. In fact, that's going to be a whole separate video. Um, if you do want to see a video like this, then just comment below and let us know. External hallucinations can vary from being really, really subtle or extremely intense. This does depend on the dose that you are taking and also your own state of consciousness. For example, external hallucinations can vary from subtle peripheral expansion on certain objects to full-blown 3D avatar fractal land, right? That can completely take over your reality. People often report that the psychedelic experience can be very similar to a dreamlike state where your mind and reality start to merge into this dreamlike playground which you can perceive projections from your psyche into your external environment. There are four levels of intensity when it comes to external hallucination. Level one is more like slight visual distortions, maybe depth perception, uh, breathing on certain objects like trees and peripheral visual drifting. For example, if you stare at something that has high texture like a plane of grass and you stare in the middle and then you start to see the outer visual field to start to morph and move and drift around. Level 2. This is when the vision starts to become more visible to one's direct sight. Uh, but lacks definition. Hallucinations are usually blurry and translucent in color and usually requires a double take like, did I just see that? What the f- Level 3. Visions increase their definition and become more alive, but still not 100% convincing. Level 4. Full-blown immersive hallucinations to the point where it's 100% photorealistic. Internal hallucinations, just like external hallucinations, can vary in degrees of intensity, but usually happens inside your mind behind closed eyelids. And because you're getting less stimulation when you close your eyes, your mind gets the chance to be more active and imaginative, therefore making the visuals more detailed and immersive. And when you go deep within your own psyche, whew, you can go into worlds and realities that you didn't even think were possible. The internal hallucinations are usually the more profound, deep experiences because there is no outside distraction, you know? And there's a much higher chance for you to be completely immersed in your experience. When you close your eyes, progressively intense visualizations which will deepen the more you are able to find the balance of letting go but at the same time concentrating on a single point. Now there are five levels when it comes to internal hallucinations. Level one are very basic colors and swirls distinctively separate from the background. Level two partially defined shapes and structures. Level three more complex shapes and figures. Level four 2D fractals. Level 5, full immersive 3D geometry. I'm sure there are more levels to this, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to stick with 5 that I can articulate. A 
autonomous entities are probably the most life-changing of the hallucinatory state where people have their moments of holy shit what the fuck was that? Autonomous entities can manifest in both internal and external hallucinations. These entities can appear to be these intelligent, sentient life forms that have infinite wisdom that are out of this world. I have experienced entities on a very high dose of mushrooms, which to me it was like this ancient tribe spirit, Native American type being that was like communicating with me using this non-English form of communication. It was like this energetic communication, but I could somehow understand. This is what blew my mind the most, right? Sometimes these entities can talk to you in plain English. Sometimes it can just be this random alien language. It's like blah, 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 blah. And the entities that you're going to see is just, well, the possibilities are endless, right? Because the human imagination is endless. So you could see fairy tale and religious phenomena from gnomes, machine elves, to Jesus Christ and Buddha. These autonomous entities are very mysterious by nature and we just have no idea on what their origin is. On one hand you have the rational explanation which says that these autonomous entities are archetypes projected from the collective unconscious. Then you've got the more mystical explanation which says that these entities are interdimensional beings from other planes of existence, right? And that it's outside of us. Who really knows? But whichever explanation it is, the experience stays exactly the same. It can still be very profound and change your life. Entities will come in all shapes and sizes with different agendas. They can be loving beings which want to help you, so they give you information that is going to help you progress in your personal journey. Or you can come into contact with a malevolent being that has nothing but bad intentions for you and wants to fuck you up. And then you've got the more neutral entities. I've come into contact with benevolent beings during my ayahuasca ceremonies where I perceive these ancient South American shaman type entity that it seemed at the time that it was there to help and heal me, right? And I've gone to contact with malevolent evil motherfuckers during my last DMT trip actually, I remember going to this dark satanic playground type of realm where there were all these sinister looking jesters around with like their big evil <laughs> grins with sharp teeth and they were just pulling out my deepest fears and just laughing at me like ha ha ha, I want to fuck you, ha ha you're here forever, bah. I was like don't hurt me. The information that you may receive through these entities is going to vary from very profound wisdom that is genuinely going to help you in your life or it could just be cliche common knowledge that you read from an Eckhart Tolle book which can still help you I guess or the worst of it could just be absolute gibberish which makes absolute no sense and the information is just not relevant to this human life. This is when your point of view switches to another perceived point. In other words, you go into a different vantage point. Now, from my understanding, you have four perspectives. You've got first person, second person, third person, and fourth person. First person is just your normal perceived point, I suppose, right? Your, your ordinary point of view. From my first person perspective, I'm just looking at a camera with a light ring thingamabob. Second person is when you perceive life through another person, plant, or object even. I've experienced second person perspective through living other people's life like friends and family and seeing how they perceive life and the emotions that they feel and what I've done has affected them from their vantage point. Very interesting stuff. This can really help bring more empathy into your life and looking at other people's perspective. Third person is out of body experience. Now this isn't very common with psychedelics unless you're taking huge doses or you're just a very sensitive person and you can just go into those states of consciousness a lot easier. But these out-of-body experiences are more common through th phenomena like astral projection and lucid dreaming. Fourth person perspective is the God perspective if you want to call it that. That is the singularity point where you transcend this dimension and you can see all sorts of perspectives all at once. The psychedelic experience isn't just limited to what you just see through your eyeballs, it also includes other non-visual phenomena such as audio, olfactory, 
and bodily sensations among others. For example, there's a phenomena called synesthesia, which allows you to perceive other senses which may cross over. For example, you might see sounds, hear colors, taste textures and really, really bizarre stuff and even have all, like olfactory hallucinations and have these very unique scents which you've never even smelt before. This is what usually I get during ayahuasca and mushrooms in particular where I start, I start smelling my body but it would just have this such a bizarre scent to it and I'm like, what, what is this? Outside of me just saying hearing colors and seeing sounds like if you haven't experienced this it, it's not going to make any sense whatsoever but it's one of the most bizarre things in the world it just feels almost non-human in a sense and with multi-sensory perception this also counts with physical sensations where you can where the boundaries start to dissolve and you can merge into external objects i remember being on a very high dose of mushrooms and just being in my bed and i would have like this blanket and I would be like rolling around in it. Like some points I'd get confused which part is the blanket and which part is my body. It's like, whew, what is going on here? I am one with everything. Give me a break guys, it was a really high dose. <laughs> Time. This concept still blows my mind and to me it's the most trippiest of all the hallucinatory states. In fact, my very first profound lesson from my first psychedelic experience, which was through mushrooms, is that time is malleable, right? And it is our ego that constructs this thing and puts it in this linear sequence and this is just what we call time. Now, I'm not a quantum physicist, so what I am about to say may be complete bullshit, pseudoscience, hippie, psychedelic, blah, 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 blah. But from what I understand about time is that it's all happening simultaneously and outside of this dimension, there is no time. Psychedelics can slow down time to the point where one minute feels like an eternity like many people get through a breakthrough DMT trip. <gasps> what the fuck, dude? I was gone for lifetimes. What the fuck? Dude, you're gone for like five minutes. <laughs> or it could feel like one hour goes past in like five minutes, like it can work both ways. People report all around the world that they've had experiences where they completely lose sense of time to the point where the boundaries between you and the perceived object just dissolves into nothingness. Scenarios and plots are these human narratives that play out inside our mind that sometimes bleed out into our external environment. Usually they act very similar to dreaming states. Like you know when you're in a dream, no matter how ridiculous and bizarre the story you're in, you just kind of go along with it and then your dream kind of constructs itself as it goes. This can happen sometimes during a psychedelic experience. In terms of internal hallucinations, you could just be closing your eyes and then go into this different world where this story plays out, or in a different realm, and uh, who, who knows what's going on. It doesn't have to be this bizarre dreaming state either. Sometimes it can just be old memories playing out, right? And where you relive certain points in your life where you may have some revelations about certain things which can help you heal certain trauma. Who knows? Now, sometimes psychedelics can be really intense and every now and again, these scenarios and plots, these stories get projected out of our mind into this external environment. So you may be with a whole bunch of your friends and then come up with this crazy story like, oh, I'm in a parallel dimension right now and Gary, he's not really Gary and you just start making up shit in your mind. Like when it gets this intense, it can cause immense confusion for sure. Now, settings and landscapes is pretty self-explanatory. It's just the settings, the landscapes, the external environments that you perceive that you're in at the time. Like many of these hallucinatory states, landscapes can occur in both internal and external hallucinations, which is when the actual setting of your trip can alter into an infinite amount of potential places. The, the settings and landscapes that you experience doesn't have to happen in a linear fashion. In fact, many of the times it happens in a very random way where you're just in 
one place and then you're in another, and it doesn't necessarily relate to each other. Sometimes these landscapes can be this direct reflection of your memories which unfold in a very clever way. Some examples of landscapes which you may explore could include planetary systems, galaxies, rainforests, jungles, cities, natural environments, caves, technological utopias, ruins, historical settings, impossibly complex geometric landscapes and much much more. Psychedelics are consciousness magnifiers that may amplify your emotions to unimaginable levels from nirvana to hell. Don't get this wrong, your emotional state is going to immensely affect your hallucinatory states, which is going to affect your visionary experience. If you're in a state of pure terror, then it's going to be a high chance that you may experience the abyss or even perceive demons and these minions and things like that. But on the love side of the spectrum, if you're in a state of pure bliss and love, then you're going to have a good time. <laughs> this is a hallucinatory state that you don't want to experience, especially when you go on the complete opposite end of that spectrum, but then it's all a spiral so it never ends and there's infinite darkness just as there's infinite levels of love. So as soon as you think that you've experienced the worst possible reality, eh, there's, there's, there's always darker, right? There's always lower realms that you can venture into. So don't think that you've experienced the worst and there's no chance that you can even go darker than that. This is, this is a mistake. I'm not trying to scare you guys. This is just what I've experienced and the kind of attitude of like, oh, oh how could it possibly get worse than that? And then that can get you a bit cocky into the, your next psychedelic experiences. <laughs> now, it is possible that unspeakable horrors can be actually good for your growth because it makes you realize certain things or maybe the horrific state that you experienced during a psychedelic trip was exactly what you needed to motivate you to move forward or do that one thing or reconcile with a family member or start exercising or maybe start that business. Sometimes bad trips can be very beneficial, but sometimes it can go too far and can just be too traumatic in and of itself, which can just scar you and do a lot more damage. You know, you can transport into a hellish realm with fire and brimstone, or you can go into this ruined civilization. For me, the most terrifying place that I went to during my ayahuasca experience was like this timeless abyss where there was nothing but me and like the visuals were very just dark and grey and rigid and uh, it was, I don't know, it was more the feeling that I was experiencing which made it so much more terrifying but yeah. Now, I touched on this earlier in this video but you may come into contact with very malevolent evil beings that want to do nothing but harm to you. This can vary from demons or these hooded creatures like Dementors, like from Harry Potter. It could be jesters, clowns, or these gloopy, mucky looking monsters. Again, the entities that you're going to encounter is going to be limited by the imagination, which is infinite. Machinescapes is a very common aspect of these unspeakable horrors. I remember during my first ceremony and I saw this entity which was like all the darkness, all the evil of all the universe comprised into one entity. Some people will call it Satan, I don't know. What, again, these are all just words. But I specifically remember it having these machine parts to it, like these, these cogs and these interlocking parts full of blood and muck and toxic waste and... I don't know. But yes, I have experienced these machine scapes and it's fucking terrifying. Now the last category, which is by far the most terrifying, uh, based on my own experience, is the fearing of one's sanity. So this is going into a psychotic break, maybe human concept starts to just be obliterated and you start to question very simple concepts like what is time, what's life, what are friends, what's family and you think that you're going to be crazy forever, maybe you think you're going to die and then you, you may start panicking and yeah, it's a sucky feeling, <laughs> especially when you're in a timeless void. Like if you're with a trip sitter or some sort of a guy, they can usually calm you down, but sometimes people go through the psychotic breaks alone and that's when, yeah, not so good things happen and that's when you hear about people jumping out of third story windows and stuff because it's just too much to handle. 
I didn't want to leave you guys on a gloomy note, so of course I'm going to talk about the other end of the spectrum. No matter how horrible shit gets, just remember that there's another side of the spectrum to that. Bliss, love, joy, nirvana, whatever you want to call it, this is the emotional state that you want to experience. And this is the state that makes people keep coming back. This is when you transcend duality and realize it's all one and that all is well, everything is good and maybe love is what brings this whole universe together and stops it from falling apart, who knows. There are many different states that one can experience at this end of the spectrum. There's God, unity, cosmic orgasm or pineal ejaculation. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, it's all one. Everything is love. Everything's gonna be okay. Cosmic orgasm could literally feel like love coming out of. <laughs> coming out of, get it? No, no pun intended. Uh, but coming out of every pore of your body, every sense, your smell, and your consciousness is tapped into the infinite wisdom of the world. And no matter what question comes your way, you have a straight answer for it. And it's like you're in this state of enlightenment and you understand everything. And it's amazing. Unconditional love, or what some people call enlightenment, is the state where the boundaries between you and everything dissolve and there is no distinction between self and object. So when you're in the state, the love that you feel for a complete stranger is indistinguishable for the love that you feel for your own partner or your own parents. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. I'd love to give a special thanks to Psychonaut Wiki for providing a lot of the resources and inspiration actually for even creating this video. Uh, it's definitely my favorite psychedelic drug resource on the web. So if you do want to know more about this, then go check out Psychonaut Wiki. You will not be disappointed. And if you are feeling extra generous today, you could always leave a like, comment below what you thought of the video, if you want to share some of your experiences with these substances. And if you did find this interesting, you could always share it around with your friends as well. As some of you may know, this channel is completely fan funded by you guys as YouTube algorithm is completely against channels like myself. But thanks to your guys' pledges on Patreon, I'm able to continuously create video for you guys and hopefully improve the quality over time. And I know you guys are probably sick to death of me talking about Patreon. I am too. Like, I don't like talking about this shit, but it's like, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. But yeah, if you feel any inkling to support this channel, then go check out Patreon. You might even find some perks that you like over there. Well, if you guys want merch like this sexy premium psilocybin t-shirt, go check the link in the description box below, among other psychedelic designs. And of course, always taste your drugs, guys. I probably should have said this in the beginning of the video, but you can get one of these awesome test kits, which can test your drugs. So at least you know what you're taking, because that's the most dangerous part about prohibition is that you don't know what you're getting on the street, and that's what can cause overdoses and other complications. So be smart and test your drugs. I got some really cool stuff in the works, guys. Not just YouTube videos, but some very exciting podcast guests, which I'm going to interview soon, hopefully, among other projects. But yeah, I'm really happy that you guys are along this ride. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, for sure. But yeah, see you guys soon. Watch this space. Peace.